Close to a billion people live in slums and slums have become a major feature of many cities in low and middle income countries. This series of papers shows what the health challenges are for people who live in slums and also what some of the solutions might be to improve health for people who live in slums. The paper argues that we need to think about slums differently. So currently UN Habitat, who are the international agency responsible for human settlements, they define slums by looking at household deprivation, but what that actually does is measure poverty. When we think about slums, we think about neighbourhoods, neighbourhoods in which housing is poor, there may be little access to water and sanitation, there may be overcrowding. Also, slums are often informal settlements, which means that people don't own the land in which their houses are built, and they don't often have the right to rent, which means that they're vulnerable to eviction. In terms of the links with poverty, not everybody who lives in a slum is poor. Most, in fact, there are many people who are above the poverty line and even reports of millionaires who live in slums. But whatever the household income or the household situation, everybody who lives in the slum is exposed to that slum environment and health risks that come with that. So risks of infectious diseases, which spread very easily in slums, but also uh, people who live in slums are exposed to stigma and discrimination based on their address, and that can have an effect on mental health and also reduce uh, appropriate use of health services. So we argue that living in a slum can pose a risk to health, but also thinking of slums as spaces gives us the opportunity, gives us the opportunity to use local solutions which can affect the health of many people all at once. So this gives us... Um, returns on investment that are greater than, say, when you address poverty in the way that it has been done before. In order to develop solutions and test these solutions, we need to raise the profile of some health in the research community. We also want to change the way that national governments and international bodies think about slums, so they also think about slums as spaces. One way of doing this is to recognise slums in national censuses. The study lead authors are presenting the papers at a global summit, UN Habitat 3, and that will hopefully increase support for some of these changes.